Okay, in this video we'll talk about rotating shifts and how to combine that lifestyle with polyphasic sleeping. Uh, you know, what schedules work and so on. Uh, this video is part of our series surrounding different work schedules and how to incorporate polyphasic sleeping into them. Uh, so you can watch the previous videos in the series if this one about rotating shifts doesn't fit your particular lifestyle, okay? Anyways, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. Um, so some jobs use rotating shifts uh, on a daily, weekly, bi-weekly or monthly basis. If this is the case for you, pulling off any regular polyphasic sleeping schedule will unfortunately be very difficult. See, adapting to a schedule requires consistent sleeping times for at least a month, which we talked about in one of our earlier videos, uh, with, where you can learn about the different adaptation stages that polyphasic sleep schedules have. I'll link it in the description so you can check it out later. Anyways, after the adaptation, it will be possible to shift the whole schedule like a daylight savings time shift, but only longer like a few hours. However, it will most likely take a week for the body to get used to the new schedule, um, similar to jet lag when traveling. So what this means is that if you're forced to jump from let's say the second work shift to the third work shift once a week, uh, you'll consistently be tired on your polyphasic schedule even after you've adapted, so that's not ideal by any means, because it will take time to acclimate to the new work schedule or the new circadian shift. Uh, if you choose to rotate your sleep times uh, circadian light and food management is also going to re be required to keep your course and naps in a good circadian placement. Uh, you can find out more about this in our course about the dark period, which will be linked in the description. I highly recommend you check it out. Anyways, being forced to be sleep deprived for a whole week each month is very unhealthy regardless of whether you're doing a monophasic or polyphasic sleep schedule. The quality of your life should improve if you're working with extended schedules, for example siesta extended, with the shorter core before work, uh, since your sleeps won't be repartitioned and you will therefore be able to use more of your light sleep buffer when you're moving your sleeps. You know, the light sleep in your course could be compared to rolls of fat uh, when you're being shot with a bullet. <laughs> okay, okay, that's a weird analogy, but, but if you have a lot of fat and get shot, uh, the bullet may be deflected and it's certainly going to be slowed down as it passes through the layer of fat. Uh, this is also the case with light sleep. If you have more of it and choose to rotate your whole schedule uh, or otherwise take a bullet to your sleep architecture, your vital sleep will be more intact because of the re redundant light sleep. But regardless, <laughs> let's talk about specific situations that work for people on rotating work shifts. The first we'll talk about is a three shift rotation where each shift is eight hours. On those work schedules, your aim should be to follow your schedule most days. Uh, try to do a schedule that copes with two of the three shifts uh, and so on. Uh, every time you have to switch schedules, your adaptation will be set back and thus will take longer. So having the rotations happen more often, like more often than once every two weeks or at random, is not going to be possible. Shifting bedtimes frequently is correlated with poor health, so it's probably wise to only do this for a limited amount of time or out of absolute necessity. Um, regardless if you're a monophasic or polyphasic sleeper. Uh, but if you're able to follow your schedule that supports two shifts and makes use of a lunch break, then one uh, break on one of them, for example, for at least two weeks in a row, you should most likely be able to adapt to that schedule. Uh, even if the whole adaptation process will be dragged out. Remember not to schedule your naps too far apart, okay. Your best bet will probably be to do a schedule with multiple cores, so that if you need to move something, you could still be relatively strict with the rest of your sleep times, you know. Uh, so if you're able to stay on triphasic, for example, for the bulk of the duration of the schedule, you can do it. Uh, I wouldn't personally risk using every man one, since you may have to move your core at least three hours 
at once, uh, which is a huge hit to take. Um, and it's the same situation with every man too, uh, with you being forced to move your core for potentially a whole 4.5 hours when you're you when you change shifts okay but let's consider a two shift rotation where both shifts are eight hours long so for example switching back and forth between the first and second work shifts um, in this case you need to make sure that your polyphasic sleep schedule takes into account both shift times and utilizes them optimally for naps uh, you have quite a few options here to work with uh, if your work times don't overlap um, just make sure that you don't have too long wakes between the naps. If the break times are inconsistent, there is the possibility of siesta everyman 1 or everyman 2 with the afternoon nap positioned at the switch change, so that you only need to rotate it about 20 minutes ideally, or realistically 30 or 40 minutes or so. This can be pulled off if the work schedule changes infrequently enough, as I've already stated for the previous version of the work schedule. Uh, now, what about two shift rotations that are 12 hours long, uh, each spanning from 6 in the morning to 6 in the evening and vice versa or some other time, you know, 12 hour shifts. Well, unfortunately this will be nearly impossible to pull off, uh, unless the shifts are rotated more seldom than once a month. If they are rotated that seldom, biphasic sleeps are likely to be the best bet because of the huge wake gap. It's overall a really bad situation to be in, especially if you don't have strict breaks. Staying on a schedule can really be compared to flying from Europe to America and that's quite challenging even on a monophasic schedule, you know. If you have uh, three shift rotations but uh, are, they are scheduled at random times like uh, one week, first shift, uh, three days, third shift, a week, second shift and so on, switching to a polyphasic sleep schedule will also not work. If the switch, switching happens uh, very infrequently, you may be able to adapt to a polyphasic sleep schedule, but we're talking about shifts that happen less than once every two weeks or so. If you actually have to work very rarely on these shifts, like let's say that you're waiting for a call most of the time, then switching to uh, like then switching more frequently will not be as big of a, of a problem if you can nap in the dead time, you know, since it would be very similar to the two shifts rotation. Cool, so we've talked about a bunch of work shifts in this, in this video. As you noticed, this video was quite information heavy. If you feel like you missed your particular schedule, you can rewind the video and see if we talked about it or you can ask in the comments below if I didn't actually talk about it. Now please comment if you succeeded with a polyphasic sleep schedule and a rotating work shift. I'd be very interested in knowing that. How frequently did you change your work shifts and what was it like to acclimate to the new schedule? Again, comment your experience below. Regardless, have a good day and remember to have pleasant naps people!